Hello. Hey. Oh my god, it's you. Yeah. <laughs> god, how are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. That is lovely to hear. Right, first question I have for you is, what got you started with music production in general? In general? Mm. Yeah, I started uh, as a hobby in the beginning of the 90s. Mm -hmm. And um, I was doing this techno music. Uh, later on in the 90s I got interested in uh, classical music a lot. And mm. um, I started learning how to play instruments and um, started to learn how to compose it and uh, do you remember what software you were using at the time uh i was still using a like a i was an amiga guy using amiga for, for i haven't heard of that music one. Uh, amiga commodore amiga mm. <laughs> the computer there and i was using music x then which was a, like a this piano roll type of program yeah instead of the tracker programs which are quite different was it easy and, uh, to use at first, or was it something that was, uh, no. you got used to? Uh, no, <laughs> it took a lot to work, but it, it it was then easier to jump from there to Logic, mm. which, which I'm using now. I've been using almost 20 years now. Yeah, I noticed. I, I rewatched um, your making of video for Amnesia when the first when the first Amnesia game came out. You were using Logic back then. I was wondering if you were still using that now, actually. And yeah, you yeah, are, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why the change? It's it's so good. <laughs> Is there? I I, I have tried Cubase, and but uh, that wasn't my thing. I haven't tried it before. I've tried FL Studio. That's the one that I use to make my music. Oh. Um, I used to use Logic back in uh, when I was in school, and Logic was fine. Logic was really good, actually. But uh, I haven't used it since. Yeah, I I changed to Mac computers uh, in the near millennium like uh, 2000 2001 yeah, at 2002 i i had uh, like a uh, my first like a uh, music which i was paid for like um, I, I started uh, i made music for code blender software's deep trouble game at 2002 and um, at that point i invested in uh, orchestral software or orchestral sample libraries and uh, such before that i was only using like synthesizers i had yeah. loads of them but uh, it was a big change you still start. um in, in your recent music like in especially it's more prevalent in amnesia the dark descent soundtrack um the use of the orchestra it, you can hear it in so many different different places just from the instruments to the credit song to the vocals that you used in um in just a lot of the tracks yeah, yeah. I, I'm, in fact, I'm, I'm still using the same sample libraries, <laughs> which, which are quite old. But uh, if it works, think, yeah, yeah, it, it works. <laughs> it's the good thing about samples; you can just use the same thing over and over again and yeah. just change it, and no one can tell the difference. Yeah, because um, most of the time I'm using uh, like um, it doesn't matter where the sound source is coming from, it because if it's manipulated mm. in a way. It somewhat sounds organic, but uh, you can't really tell what the sound is from. Mm. Like uh, I use in the, like Amnesia, or the ambience tracks were done by manipulating orchestral sounds. Mm. And uh, I didn't use any synthesizer sound. No, which is very different to um, what you did in Penumbra and uh, in Soma as well. Soma especially has a lot more sort of variation in the technological sounds and a lot of the synth sounds yeah it's because when i started working on penumbra series at 2006 uh, it was a major leap for me because i didn't have compose any horror music 
hmm. before that point. So it was a total new playground for me, and I had to learn a lot of things. And uh, you yeah, did really well that, in that Penumbra, because a... uh, for for a first time getting involved into like horror, that was a lot of the tracks carry the same sort of weight and tension that your tracks tend to do, and uh, it, it's. They're really atmospheric. No, ma no matter what like sort of style you're going for, whether it's like a stalking sort of ambience or like a chasing one, it's there's always just this like thickness to yeah, it. Yeah, by uh, um, listening to Penumbra soundtrack now, I feel that uh, some tracks uh, sound a bit, bit clumsy <laughs> in a way because at 2002 I was studying a music production. And didn't have so much skills in um, mixing and uh, mm. processing sound. So in Amnesia, it was in much uh, a deeper level. It sounds a lot more professional, a lot more polished in Amnesia's ambiences, and you can you can really tell the change in um, in instruments and the change in quality as well. Because Amnesia is a lot more paced and um, more spread out uh, in terms of like how you use the sounds in the tracks like the way that it's structured and then in Soma it sort of does the same thing, I feel like there's less ambient tracks in Soma because they, they sort of blend in more to the environments, whereas in Amnesia yeah. they dictated the environment you were in yeah they're more like a soundscapes mm. so you don't if you're not listening to what the, what the, what's surrounding you or the audio you can't tell if it's a if it's actually me music or uh, if it's a soundscape yeah because lots of my ambient tracks are soundscapes they work really well though yeah i, I think uh, amnesia was uh, quite easier to do because soma was then about all about uh, synthesizing sounds mm. and uh, it, it took so much time to make all the sounds like uh, 70 80 percent of the time and the rest was just composing or, or... I feel like in, in Amnesia and Penumbra it's sort of like those tracks you can you can make something for it and then plop it into a level and it sounds good but with Soma it feels like you, you sort of made the music based off of the environment rather than the other way around how do you prefer to make music just for frictional games in general how do you, do you like get a glimpse of the environment you're making the music for first uh. Or do you make the song and then they work around that? Benul Brand Amnesia, I, I didn't play the game at all when I composed music for them. Mm. I was just... Uh, I had this music document where I had all the description of each track uh, which, with what kind of mood it should be and uh, what's the function of the music. And uh, I was kind of blindfolded <laughs> in a way, but uh, I think that's that's okay because i don't necessarily need to see the game it worked really well like you, you yeah i had some it was like a screenshot from the game but uh, nothing else but uh, then with, in soma in, in developing with soma and um, i played the game yeah also do you think during that the development time. Uh, maybe at some cases but uh, I think it wasn't that necessary mm. most of the time. I mean, you did fine without it, yeah. So, for all of Frictional Games, because you've done more than just Frictional Games, how many projects have you been directly involved in overall? For something like 20, 21, 22, maybe. Do you have Not a favourite? Oh, no, let you go. <laughs> my favourite, my favourite. <laughs> uh, I, I think it's Amnesia. The original one. My favorite, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not not just because it came so popular, but I looking back at how the sound soundtrack sounds, I'm maybe the most proud of it. it I is, think it's it's better for than Soma. It, I think it's your most Penum memorable soundtrack, and the, I'd, I'd say the most loved in the community because I know so many people that have just like. They've used it in projects and they've like took inspiration from it. And I personally have taken inspiration from it as well when it comes to like some of my ambient stuff. Um, yep. it's, a, it's a very memorable soundtrack. 
Yeah, I think the limitations help also because we decided not to use anything but the instruments from the era the yeah. game's story was based in. And uh, and we also were out of money. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to I had to create the like a quite short loops because I got paid for every minute. Hmm. Like uh, the, there wasn't that much budget for long tracks. It still works no... really well in, in 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 your favor there because the environment, the ambience, even though they're loops, they so, there's so many little details in every one that you can sort of think it's the same, but uh, the track evolving in a different way. Was that different in Soma? Did you get like to make longer tracks? Was that easier for you? Yeah, there was no limitations with Soma, not at all. Because there's a lot of different like sounds in Soma's soundtrack. There's you've got the piano and the strings uh, yeah, in there... like the credits and like in other sections of the game. Yeah, there, there's not much acoustic sounds. Also, only the piano and the strings, and uh, everything else is uh, synthesizer hmm. sounds. Yeah, there's such a good variation of them as well, though. You're like the soundtrack is is just really diverse with a with a bunch of the noises and the sounds and the samples that you used. Yeah, every synthesizer sound is handcrafted, so it took a lot of time. I didn't use any preset sounds at all. Can you play any instruments at all, like in real life? Yeah, uh, I studied bassoon. bassoon. You know the lot of reg register wind instrument. Mm. And um, I, al I have also studied piano and uh, other woodwind instruments like a clarinet and flute mm. and oboe. And uh, some cello and uh, acoustic guitar or guitar in general, but the you, classical you, guitar as well. You've picked up like quite a lot of different skill sets, then, haven't you? Yeah, I'm not uh, particularly great anything, <laughs> but in with bassoon. But uh, the thing is that uh, that I want to learn the basics so I can somehow uh, utilize these instruments in my music. Because you can use it as like a basis to then turn it into something different and evolve from it. Yeah, and I can use them to as sound effects mm. as well, because every acoustic instrument can make interesting sounds, especially for horror games. Yeah. Like you heard the bassoon in the, in the amnesia. Was there a project that you in, found the easiest to make music for? Not just in frictional games, but like overall? Uh, not really. I, I don't, maybe I don't want to make it easy for myself because I want every new project to be a challenge some, mm. some, at some level. But there are easier projects, like uh, some minor projects like uh, small games i imagine like the music you do which just uh say like the the ending credits for amnesia and uh soma they're very orchestral they use a lot of like strings and piano and stuff like that it, would you say that's easier to make than the actual like soundscapes for the levels it is easier to make the traditional music yeah because it's more like formulaic it's yeah. yeah. more of a structure yeah because the the sound with the strings is so, so homogenic. Is it like a, they, they are easy to mix together? Mm. But if you put some big um, synthesizing sounds between them, it becomes much more difficult to mix yeah. them. And uh, mostly, the most interesting synthesizing sounds came uh, come by like an accident from the synthesizers, in a way they should be done like a, it's like a side effect from the like a, how I would tell that um, side effect from the like a mistake that turns into something else you can spark an idea from it and be like oh I could use it they, like this yeah I can just like a, try to make a sound exploring to make a sound and you notice this one tiny element you accidentally done and you want that from there and mm. uh, you have to like a um, get rid of the all the else and uh, usually there are like a lot of bad frequencies around that that yeah. element and it becomes a sometimes nightmare to put it into mix 
Do you tend to um, restart tracks a lot that you work on? Uh, it depends. It, de it de depends on the feedback I get. Hmm. Of course, my clients ha have to try to tell if the track <laughs> is suitable or not. Yeah. And um, if it needs more work, and I, I'll do it. And if it's all old shit, then I'll start it over, all over again, hmm. doing a new, new track. Has because you've made a sometimes, lot of music. Oh, you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I notice my old music, like a like so mind that this new Amnesty Rebirth. They're like a five-year pro projects, mm. and uh, some other, sometimes I know this some music tracks I made like a few years ago, and I don't probably necessarily like them anymore. So I oh. sometimes I, I decide to do new versions of or new track by myself. Mm. Is there anything that you that you can look back on now and you don't like? Sorry. Is there anything, any track you can look back on now that you can, you, you want to pick pick apart and redo? Yeah, because the five years is so long time. Mm. You're, 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 you have a, like a, you develop your skills in five years in much, uh, like a... Because you learn a lot. Yeah, you, have, yeah you, have, you learn a lot during five years and then you, you look back at the tracks uh, which you did five years ago and they're that not that good. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so, regarding um, frictional games in general, how did you first get involved with them? My first projects are were done with the uh, Codebender software, mm. which is a small Mac company doing Mac games. There was this audio guy, Jens Nilsson, <gasps> which is the co-founder <laughs> yeah. of the frictional game, working at the same projects. So. So he asked me if I could do some music for Penumbra Tech Demo, wow. which was the non-commercial yeah. short Tech Demo for the Penumbra. And uh, I did, and then they asked me to... To come on full time? Yeah, to, to, to join join, to join them doing the mm. uh, thrill logic. Do you think it was... Well, how was the process for making the soundtrack for Penumbra? Because it was very sort of sci-fi, very interest. It was an interesting game to, to score for, especially being your first horror. Yeah, I don't recall what what kind of descriptions I had then. If I had to like uh, to take influences from some other projects or something, but uh, I might have just done my own thing, like I usually do. Mm. Like uh, not caring that much if something, someone give, gives me references. Yeah. Like, uh, well, Soma had to like uh, some references from Blade Runner, or I was asked to make some music to sound like from Blade Runner, but uh, I don't think <laughs> <laughs> it necessarily can be heard from that. But, uh, yeah, I don't expect you to like remember a lot of things because I mean it was like what fifteen years ago. Like it was, it was yes. Penumbra was quite a while ago, and you've learned a lot of things since then. So it might have pushed some of it out of your memory. Yeah, I think the the the, the it was quite a similar experience than Amnesia. I just had the, this music document with all the info I needed, and you just went from there. I, yeah. They're, they're kind of similarly structured, but Amnesia just builds off of everything that Penumbra set out to do. And, and you can really hear that in the music. Yeah, the game was like a, the first Penumbra had the option to protect yourself by attacking monsters. Mm. And they get got rid of it with the Black Pledge. Which I think was a, and, a better uh, idea. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was. Because <laughs> uh, Penumbra as well, or Overture at least, was the first property like that came out of Frictional Games when it was founded. Because it was only founded in like 2007, I believe, 2006, 2006 by Thomas and Thomas and Jens. Seven. Yeah. Mm. So it's quite a new, uh, I guess, because I, I know Thomas has been he's been making games for for a long time now. And, um, but this was his first like proper company sort of thing. I th no, I think he worked with someone else, but I can't actually I can't remember. But, um, Thomas. 
Yeah, I, I don't know but if before Frictional he was doing something else. Oh, I don't actually know. Yeah. I, I could I could have sworn it was something, but I, my brain's just not bringing it up. Anyway, so <laughs> with Amnesia, the the terror meter is probably the most iconic. Sa- is, is 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 that's a very iconic sound. The, the terror meter. Ha- the it's, terror it's so sound. so primal and panic-inducing when you're playing the game. Like. One of the questions I've had for the last decade is, how the fuck did you make it so good? <laughs> the terror sound. What was the it? <laughs> truth, the truth behind the terror sound is... <gasps> <laughs> wow. Um, so what was it like with Amnesia Justine then? Because Justine had a very different um, plot to Dark Descent. Was there th- tracks that you threw away from Dark Descent that got used in Justine? Yeah, they used. I think they used many tracks from the Dark Descent, and I just did a few more tracks for Justin. Mm. Like the Suitor Attack track. And, uh, Which is probably the, the the most intense chase theme, I, I think, in any frictional game. Is the yeah, Suitor. it might be. It, it might be. Because <laughs> it's so just. There's so many different sounds all at once, and it, it just sounds really good, but also just terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> um, so about the Amnesia series, Machine for Pigs, you didn't score, that was up to Jessica Curry. Um, yeah. how do you think? How do you think she did? Do you think it expanded on the themes that you set out in Dark Descent? Uh, I actually haven't played the Machine for Pigs, but oh. uh, I've heard its music and um, I think she did just great. It was very different for from what I did, but mm. uh, that's it's fine. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. they were they were both both games were going for different things in the first place. So, but I think I think she did a really good job. And in a lot of the areas, which... I'll have to listen to that again. <laughs> mm. I'd say yeah, give it a listen if you haven't, because she did a, a really interesting job. Maybe I should play the game sometimes too. <laughs> I mean, it's on sale now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God. Um. So what was it like making the music for Soma then? Because it was it's a very different environment from Dark Descent. You used a lot of synthesizers and um. The, the, yeah, the, the music the... feels a lot more open. I bought a collection of synthesizers, like uh, you maybe saw in the video. Oh like yeah, the I, had, I had this modular system and uh, many new synthesizers. But in the end, the sound creating sounds with mod- modular and uh, other synthesizers took so much time. Mm. I ended up using uh, software because it was so time taking to create the sounds. Well, what what was the most difficult part of Soma? Would you say As- aside from that, did that did you run into any walls that you had to like sort of get around? Um, was it just trying to nail the sound and the mix of everything? Yeah, hmm. I I think um, I actually sold my <laughs> most of my synthesizers after Soma, and uh, <laughs> I think it would have been easier if I would have been using. Software plugins only. <laughs> with um, with frictional games, as as a company, they're very driven to deliver this unique and sort of meaningful experience with its games. All of the games toy with like ideas of morality and identity in like a lot of ways. Given the nature of your work with it, do you go into each track with like a goal in mind? Do you want to make the audience feel like paranoid, hunted, scared, anything like that? Of course, I want the audience to feel something hmm. the, with the tracks. Like uh, it's meant for like a chase track. You, you should think like you're being chased. And, uh, yeah. And uh, like a, like the ending of the soma and um, seeing the world like uh, destroyed. Hmm. Of course, there was like um, but uh, like I said, I, I have these descriptions from the team, like what they want people yeah. to feel like if there's some like a the satellite track 
from the end of the soma is like a, there should be some feeling of hope as well it's sad sad track but uh, there should be like a some sort of wonder to it so there's a game that came out pretty recently called the designer's curse and i know you made the music for that i haven't listened to it i've only seen the trailer for that game it was made by a 15 year old i believe was it yeah. was it different going into that into that experience there was it different being directed by someone who's new to the scene uh uh christian Blanford is his name and um uh, it's like a this little wonder kid <laughs> because he, he's not uh new to the scene he's, you know like a, he's done like a three games already yeah he's done a few i think so he started when he was like it, 13. It, yeah so it's amazing for his age like uh, have skills like that and he also can compose and play piano oh. very well and, um, so oh. he's a wonder, wonder kid <laughs> and, and um, i know he was really excited uh, to have uh, you on board <laughs> the designer's curse was uh, inspired from by amnesia so yeah. he wanted he wanted amnesia like songs like music tracks for it and uh, that wasn't a problem for me <laughs> no, you that, made them. <laughs> yeah but he composed few tracks as well they're like a more like a traditional sounding tracks mm. are are his his works that's what one of the main reasons i'm interested in playing the game is just to, to hear the evolution of your music because it's been a long time since we've heard well unless you've got like another project that I, i'm forgetting about but you've got amnesia which is 10 years ago soma which is five years ago it's been such a long time since we've since i've personally heard anything new from you which is why i'm excited to play that game because it's going to be new music that and like it's going to be yeah. sort of an evolution because yeah. you're, you're always we are, learning we are, we are planning it chapter two for the designer's curse so Ooh. i don't know when it, it's coming out but the, the first one is quite short mm. so we need some more people it was so, so uh like, um, pe people liked it so mm. they wanted more so chapter two is coming out sometime but um, i have done some more horror project projects like um, recently like uh I did a couple of tracks for Sir Bedlam Productions' uh, new game, oh. Captured. Captured. Oh my and, god! You, um, what music did you do for that? Because I played there that. Was captured. Mm. Uh, I'm I'm not sure if the music is there yet because he, he might be updating the game. But uh, there was like a two with two crazy strings going. Like these short moments, hmm. but uh, I haven't actually played the game yet. But uh, I don't know where they are <laughs> in the game. I, I think there was a demo that came out uh, like a couple of years ago now. That I I don't think if if you've just made the music for this recently, I don't know if you made the music for the, yeah, that was used back. in the demo. Oh yeah, yeah like no. a, early this year. And there's there's this game called Gold Side. Oh, let me see. Uh, check. <laughs> <laughs> Side. Gold side, yeah. It's in Steam. I want to have a look as well. Did you find it? Uh, yeah, I found it. Psychological horror first person game. <laughs> the, I, yeah. I'm, I'm seeing a theme here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, horror, horror. I don't expect you to like talk about those projects, obviously, because they're not released yet. So you've got to keep some things under wraps, yeah. Yeah. Which is why I'm excited. I'm I'm really excited for Rebirth, just because obviously your music's going to be there, and you've got like Frictional always manages to deliver a memorable experience, and everything works so well in their games together. Like the music, the sound design, the story, the environments, it all works just. Perfectly, which is why I'm super excited to see just how it evolves. It, and knowing that we've only got like two months till it comes out is super interesting to me because it's just something I haven't I haven't looked forward to a game like this in such a long time. So it better be good. <laughs> All I can say about this game, it will be amazing. Ooh, excited! Maybe the best work so far. That's good. Do you, do you feel like, because you've been in the industry for a, for a while now, do you feel like you're still growing and still learning things as a producer? Always. 
mm. always new things. Like that. The and learning you... never st stops. You, always like I, I don't want to like uh, be in my old shoes. Like uh, when there's a new project, I want to develop my skills as well. I'd want to do something different always. Because mm. you experiment a lot as well, and you've done a lot of different a lot of different styles of music for a lot of different games now. Are you excited about anything in the future? Like, I guess you're going to still be working with Frictional for a while. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I hope so. Because you've uh, been there since the beginning, you know. They can't get rid of you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're not. But um, I don't know. I'm just happy with the way things are going. Do you get a lot of people like reaching out to you, or do you look for a lot of op opportunities in the music industry? Yeah, every now and then, but I'm I'm not really looking for anything. Like, um, it takes so much time to work with these projects. Yeah. I might come. I, I'm I'm not. I wouldn't take any like a uh, another big project as I had this this mm -hmm. one. Like, uh, I'm only working on minor pro projects besides fictional games. Mm. When it comes to. Um just producing music in general what what do you do you have any like tips or just anything to get around writer's block like when you just don't know how to progress a track do you start over or do you just make a sound and then roll with that it depends like uh, for the soundscape i might i have this feeling of this place where it's going to be at and uh, i like to think about the tones if it's uh, sounding cold or warm and what kind of frequencies should I use? So I started to make sounds, create sounds from that feeling. Yeah. Of course, these games also always have like a teams. So it's if you create a team, it's more easy to work on the other track as well, mm. which are related to this, that team. Out of everything you've made, uh, is there anything that you're like? What's the song you're most happy with overall? Song I'm most happy with. Hmm. If you had to pick just just one. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Not one, maybe. I like to think a Soma's ending song was quite. That's a good one, yeah. Good. It's very simple, but. Um, S maybe that's why works. it's so good. Yeah. yeah. I feel like my um, favorite thing from you was um, the title screen for Soma when when you beat the game. It, it's yeah. this sort of serene, sort of calm, but then you hear like the technology and, and the the static and stuff cutting in, and it just reminds you of like the world of Soma. Yeah, was... maybe another track would be the backhaul ambience from Ooh. Amnesia. Mm. Uh, I don't know. Well, well, it's quite. Uh, people remember it because it was after that water the chase. Monster. One water monster chase, and uh, maybe that's why they remember these tracks, especially. I feel like with backhaul as well. Uh, if you go to like a comment section uh, on a video on YouTube that has the song in it, uh, a lot of people will just comment a bunch of E's because of the. <laughs> the <Yeah. vocal. laughs> I didn't actually know if it's going to be in the game or not. So I don't even polish the track mm. in the end. And um, Jens put this, my sketch into the game, like which wasn't even like finished. Mm. <laughs> it was, was a sketch version of the track, and it's in the game. Th this... Because I didn't, I didn't know if it's going to be there or, or not. <laughs> That track has an extended version, I think. Yeah, like a, one hour or something. Or <laughs> oh, no, I mean, like, I mean, like the actual the song that they used in the level loops. But there's one that you made where it keeps going on for a little bit before it loops. Yeah, it's it's for the soundtrack. Yeah, I wanted it to sound more like a song, like not a loop, not a like a. It's nothing not going to end to the wall. Yeah. So out of everything as as well, is there something? Is there a track that jumps out to you that you don't like, that you want to change? The one of the worst tracks 
I've done is the trailer music for the first Penumbra. It's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember that one. Um, the tra Wait, so you do the trailer music as well? Have you done the music for other trailers? No. Oh. There were some of my music done uh, used in the uh, Soma's trailers, maybe, but uh, there were there's some other guy doing the trailer music, I think. Well, I've run out of questions. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> It would be easier if you have a questions. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll try and think of some off the top of my head. Because I've, I've got like a page and there's like 30 and we've gone through like all of them. <laughs> God, so Rebirth. I know you can't talk too much about it, so it's fine if you turn these, this question down. The way that you've been working on that soundtrack, you've been working on it for five years now, possibly longer. I don't know if, if you had like, if the team had ideas for, an, for another Amnesia game before then. What's been the experience like creating that soundtrack yeah I started working on it immediately after Soma was released and uh, first I of course I did some concept music like uh, for uh, trying to find what the music should sound like mm. then in, in five years of course uh, my skills have developed a lot like um, and I have had new ideas from the new all the new plugins I have bought after then. Yeah. So now I'm now I'm really in the process of uh, uh, going back to my old music again and uh, thinking what how I should change it or mm. not. But uh, that's what I'm doing now. And um, were you excited to return to the world of amnesia? Yeah, like uh, there are some relations with music some very minor minor because the new amnesia is somewhat based in the lore which was um, discussed in the dark descents yeah. letters letters like this is going to be like a plane crashes in algerian desert and uh, the algeria was mentioned it in in dark descent and we see it as well in like loading screens and stuff we see like the campsites and stuff like that yeah what do you think your longest soundtrack has been so far? Longest? Mm. Like uh, in, in minutes? Yeah, or just overall, yeah. Could be track wise, like how many mute, like songs there are. I think there was like a one to two hundred tracks in Soma. Oh my god. And uh, it might be the same thing with this. But um, of course, when I do soundtrack albums, I'm not going to put all the tracks there. Mm. Because it would be stupid, like uh, <laughs> to hearing uh, little stringers here and there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but every every person who has the game has all the access to the music, of course. Mm. And uh, when I I'm doing the soundtrack albums, I don't want to just put all the same music and sell <laughs> sell it, sell the soundtrack <laughs> with the, all the same music. But I have to give them something more as well. Like like you heard the backhaul music, it's a bit different than from the game mm. because it's at the loop and uh, it has a slightly different sound. Because it is just its own song in that, right? Yeah, yeah. Because I did this for for the soundtrack, mm. so I wanted to polish that. And uh, and uh, in games, I have to of course make make some space for all the sound effects and dialogue. Yeah, so of course. I might I might change that for the soundtrack as well to make the the music sound a bit bigger. You've done quite a few things. Can you tell me anything about the sound of fiction? Because that's your that's your own personal. Is it is it a music label? Is it just a it's company? It's a kind kind of music label. It's my own like a channel to publish my music. Hmm. Well, I don't know if it's if it, 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 it would be a make a difference if there's sound of fiction or not. But uh, it's just a, just a channel. Some guys have asked me if I could publish their music, but I said, uh, like, uh, no, it's, I read just, that for, on website, it's, yeah. it's just for my own, own products, mm. projects. Has there been anything else that you've worked on that's got cancelled or? Uh, not lately. No. Because I had my bad experience for, from pro projects like that. And uh, I try to be very careful with the projects I choose. I, yeah. I want to know what they are going to release. I'm not going to jump into some projects 
from the first time developer and <laughs> see it's not finished. I feel like everyone that, that needs you for something seeks you out and like manages to, to find you and it just it feels like everything that you're involved with is just better. <laughs> yeah. And it's always <laughs> like a horror project, like uh, always. <laughs> are you are you happy with that or do you want to do more than just that? Do you want to be known for more than just the horror guy? Yeah. <laughs> I can compose something else too. I'd be excited to hear some more of your ambient stuff, yeah. But it's album. always horror. Ho always horror. <laughs> hmm. You do manage to branch out though, because the soundtracks for a lot of the games that you score, there's more than just horror themes in there. There's more than just like ambient soundscapes. You've got more of the sort of powerful and emotional tracks, like the the credits ending, like the ending songs and stuff like that. Yeah, Wait. that's imp imp important because nobody's going to remember those soundtracks without those tracks with melodies and themes and such. Mm. And that's good. There are there are some there are those kind of tracks in the games as well. Wanted to do more than just music in video games. Have you ever thought about voice acting or or like translating or something like that? Because you're not natively English. Yeah. So it's a bit <laughs> difficult with with this accent to do I don't anything. Know, there's, there's still like things you could do, maybe even in your own accent as well. But your your voice is something that's changed like quite a lot. Like all of you, all of you at Frictional, uh, like your accents have, have gotten way more clearer over the years. It's super interesting to to realise that and to like hear how you've all evolved English wise because English is such a shit language. <laughs> it's so difficult. But yeah, but I don't know if I've developed my speech in English because I don't talk English like uh, I talk in English like very rarely. So I ca I caught you on a good day. <laughs> I I yeah, but I of course I read most mostly read English text and uh, listen to English, but uh, I'm not that good at speaking it. English is just a really hard language in general. So I mean, like it's it's definitely understandable. I I, I have done speaking in in Finnish, of course. Well, I can't think of anything else. <laughs> Um, we're coming up to an hour uh, yeah, on the recording. 15, 15 minutes, yeah. But you're going to see it before everybody else. It's not going to be like an hour-long boring video. There's going to be animations, there's going to be graphics, and I'm going to cut quite a lot of it down just to keep it pretty... pretty, like... Yeah. Just focusing on the bigger questions that more people will want to know about. And you're going to use my video picture if you want. Ding. It might be just a bit boring to see a like, talking face. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool if you have animations. So. Things. Yeah, I don't. I, I I put a lot of work into like my videos, and um, there's a lot of frictional videos that I've done in the past as well. I did a video essay which sort of dissected a lot of the themes that frictional games tend to use it with like the music, the sound design, the environment, the story structure, and stuff like that. And I want to do more and more stuff like that. Um, and this was like having you on was such. It's going to be super interesting because I want to talk to more frictional people and like hear their side of things and like know what they've done and their involvement with the company and stuff like that. But um, would you be? Yeah, you had to you had to catch them at the right time because now they're super busy and uh, yeah. and unless yeah, Rebirth gets gets out and there everybody is like uh, interviewing them. <laughs> but um. Would you be up for after after Rebirth comes out? Would you want to come on for another interview? Yeah, of course. Lovely, thank you. Oh. Thanks for having me. Lovely. Thank you so much for coming Lovely on. This is, is 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 honestly sort of surreal because um, again, yeah, I'm just really happy with like your work. Like you do so many things, and you're you're such an inspiration, not just to me, but to a lot of other people in in the music field. And it's super weird, like, getting to talk to you. That's It's so cool. I wouldn't have <laughs> thought I'd be doing that. So thank you so much for actually coming on and giving me thank your time. You. I really do appreciate that. Let's do another interview then when the report gets out. <laughs> <laughs> that would be lovely. <laughs> yeah. Right, well, have a lovely day. Thank you so much. Yeah. You too. That was, that was pretty epic. That was genuinely really cool. <laughs> I can't believe I did that! 
I fucking talked to Miko Tarmia, man. <laughs> I don't think I said his name once. Did either of us say our names? <laughs> <laughs> fucking crazy. So it's two in the morning. I've just finished editing the interview. Um, took me about six, seven hours. I can't remember what time I started, but um, there was a lot. We got a lot talked about. It was really interesting, actually. Uh, I, I forgot just how many things we, we discussed. Again, I want to give a huge thank you to Miko because it, it was just absolutely lovely getting to talk to him. And uh, I really appreciate him giving me some of his time. That was just really sweet of him. And I can't wait to, uh, to see what Rebuff has in store and uh, to talk to him again after that. In the description of this video, I'm going to leave a bunch of links to um, Miko's website. He's... There's, <laughs> There's a peg on my curtains. <laughs> I don't know how long that's been there. Yeah, I'm gonna leave links to his website and um, his band camp where you can buy his music, which you should definitely do. And if you haven't played any of the Frictional games already, go and play them. There'll be links in the description, I guess, to those as well. Why not? Go for it. Don't forget, I am Tassie, and I will see you very, very soon with my Amnesia Rebirth playthrough. Something in my eye. <sighs> oh. Crazy. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next month, two months, maybe, I don't <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm really tired, goodbye, go away. <laughs>